what are some of the challenges that like you faced with product teams uh, to help them embrace experimentation? I'll, I'll say this a lot, and I, I don't think it's like the end all be all, but I think a big help is leadership advocacy. Um, I think it's critical that your leadership is advocating for experimentation, setting kind of expectations just to, I think that just kind of helps to um, gel teams and kind of keep them focused on, okay, I need to start paying attention to what, you know, Shagan is saying around experimentation. That's always a help. It doesn't always happen. Um, so let's just say that does not happen. Um, a lot of it is kind of like being a salesman, number one, is you are trying to influence and persuade people to do things or follow processes or directions that they don't maybe know they even want or need, or maybe they don't really want it. So a lot of it to me is um, education and what I call like internal PR, or public relations. When you're tackling a new org and they're new to experimentation and you, you, you have outlined all these things that you do, who do you pick? Where do you start first? I don't always have one answer because there's always pros and cons to how you might go about where to start first. But I think generally for me, if I'm trying to really build a culture and sort of a, an embedded practice, I actually often start with what I call like the power experimenting group, the, the teams that are either already doing it and know how to do it, if, if mm -hmm. there is any team there. Um, that I can use as sort of role model examples, um, or let's just say, you know, nobody's really experimenting. It's a really brand new organization. I will look for teams that I think are highly motivated to experiment because I think um, it's the fastest path to actually even show the teams that are either more resistant or a little bit harder to kind of get on board when you show them what great looks like and you kind of show some of the great wins and learnings and how it's shifting other teams, it starts to create that motivation for um, teams to want to, to, to participate. It also gets, you know, a big piece of it is politics and getting in front of leadership. Yeah. So if you can get some of those quick wins faster, um, it starts to create a bit more momentum. Um, on the flip side, there's people who are very resistant. Um, those that think it's a waste of time i have to get things out yeah the is, is the only way to get them on board is to use champions or do you have other ways to to uh get them on your side what i often find is that you know product managers and even developers like they want to do experimentation and especially as it's like grown in the industry it's more you know well known than it used to be there mm -hmm. is a like a desire to um, but the challenge is more about prioritization of the work they have. There's, it's kind of like, I'd love to, but, um, and sometimes perceiving experimentation and product delivery as kind of exclusive concepts. It's either I do experiments or I deliver a feature rather than thinking about experimentation is a method and is a part of the process to delivering a feature. So, um, I think how I sort of approach those challenges, and I mentioned it kind of even in the beginning, which is the education and just sort of teaching them the best practices around, you know, even what is the flywheel in the, in the steps of experimentation. But yeah. I kind of think about like working with them on their process, because if it's an issue about like capacity and stacking it against all the other product work they have, um, what I like to do is kind of first look at what is your current process of delivery today? You know, when and, you know, at what kind of time intervals or program increments are you uh, building your backlog? Are you doing sprint planning when you're actually then focused on the build and then when things get delivered? And I'm trying to see where I can advise how and where experimentation can fit in a little bit more organically into the process. Do you have any advice or any thoughts around how do you pull that more forward into the development cycle. Out of 10 um, features that get delivered um, without experimentation backing it, eight of them fail. So like 80% of your features will fail if you're not backing it through experimentation. And I've been talking with a team of like, how can we actually go back and do some retrospective of the things that we've delivered without experimentation and have they actually resulted in what teams expected? Then I can go back and say, look, this is why you don't want to only do it for validation because at that point think about how much cost you've already put in you know be it headcount and bandwidth and yeah. all of the things and you've delivered it and so if it doesn't work 
Now what do you do? Do you like pull the thing and scrap it or now think about the long road to try to figure out how to fix it? Right? I was wondering, how do you differentiate between things that you should test and when you shouldn't test? So the simple thing that I first ask is, if you experiment on this and let's say it doesn't, whatever you're thinking of building and running as your variant, if it doesn't perform the way you expect, are you implementing it anyway? And mm -hmm. you'd be surprised that oftentimes teams will say, well, yeah. In that case, I would say, well, yeah, you don't, don't test this. You're already building it. Maybe you can use some other ways of like analytics. Um, and mm -hmm. then what you would be doing is building a plan for, okay, as soon as this thing launches, what is my experimentation roadmap look like then?